In this video, we're going to cover how to make uh, a, a rig stretch. So stretchy legs, stretchy arms, so we can get um, some stretch to that or, or back. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on just the arm. because We have both FK and IK in it. And I'll show you the two different methods that I usually use for scaling. Um, when we do the IK arm, the same thing can be applied to the legs. Same thing can be applied to the chest. Um, so I'll really only cover just the arm, but just know that it can be applied to these different parts um, as well. It's the same thing. Um, so I'll start with the FK arm. And actually, if, if you've been following the videos, I'm pretty sure I forgot to hook up the hand here. Let's see if I did or didn't. Oh, no, I did. Okay. So same concept as the hand it, for the FK arm is we're just going to hook up something that controls uh, the stretch of that. Um, and on the fingers, we hooked it up to the scale. So it's going to be the same deal for the arm here. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and turn on, oh, x-ray joints is on. Oh, I know why, because it's hidden. Or is it? Oh, <laughs> I've got turned off the layer. There we go. Okay. So same concept for the arms, we're going to uh, attach it to scale. And really, if we just use scale X on here, and actually I need to get into my outliner, so because really we have three arms here, so we need to be able to control both of them, or really all three. Um, let's see, that's a foot rig. OK. <clears throat> so before we locked out the, the scale on uh, these FK controls, uh, we're going to want those back, but at least in, j just in one axis, really. Uh, so I, with the control selected, I'm going to go to Edit, and where is it? Uh, channel Control. And in here, I can control what's hidden and what's keyable. Um, so all the stuff that I can't see that I can't just right-click on to say Show Again. Uh, I can look through here through non uh, keyable Hidden and go find Scale. And really, all I want is Scale X. I'm going to move this back over to keyable, and then I can unlock it here. I could also go through over to this tab here and do unlock, but um, either way, same thing. Um, I'm going to go do this for each of the FK controls. And so FK controls are pretty straightforward. Um, you're just going to hook them up to uh, the scale. So now we have a scale, you know, and we could do this with a slider if we wanted to, um, or we could actually use the existing scale here to stretch these out. All right, so let's go ahead and hook this up to the FK arm. And left shoulder, FK rig. All right, and I'm going to grab my control, go to Window, General Editors, and Connection Editor. Uh, the control is loaded up as the output, and we're going to grab shoulder joint for the FK rig. And remember, you got three joints in here. You have the actual shoulder, um, the IK shoulder, and the FK. We just want to focus on hooking this up to the FK shoulder right now. Uh, much like the rotations uh, switch between FK and IK, um, the, the FK and IK rigs to follow, uh, we'll do the same thing with a scale where it's following either the uh, scale of the FK rig or the IK rig for uh, its scale. Okay, so we're going to take scale X of the control and plug it into scale uh, X of the joint. And we'll do the same thing for the elbow here. And uh, it's right in front of me. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to focus really just on, on this left arm now, because, again, it's the same deal for the other side. Um, so I believe we have our FK rig visible. And you see how it's stretching out um, farther. And did I unlock that? Nope, I did not. Uh, farther than our skeleton can. So, I mean, it, it 
the real skeleton, the, the JNT skeleton, is only following the rotations of this, so it doesn't really it isn't really capable of falling out of there. Um, but you can see when we bend the FK arm now, uh, as far as the position of the FK arm, you know, this is how long it is. So I'm going to undo that scaling that I did. Um, and we can go ahead and actually hook this up now, because we're going to do it on the, F, or, uh, on the IK arm as well. So this will allow us to see what's going on there. So uh, we're going to do the same thing we did for the rotations. And we're going to have um, the scale of the FK rig uh, plug into the scale of the, the joint rig, uh, but as well the IK rig too. So it's also plugged in there, and we're using a condition node to say, hey, when we're on IK, use the IK scale. When we're on FK, use the FK scale. So let's go ahead and let's see. Um, you know, really, we could just do a set trimming key. We don't even need the, the condition node. Um, so let's do that. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to use a good constraint to do that, I guess. <clears throat> Actually, you know, let's let's do something else. Um, let's not use a good constraint because constraints are a little wonky sometimes. We do have uh, a constraint scale, so we can we could use that. But I'm going to use something else because we haven't done this uh, yet, and it's actually a pretty handy little way to swap between two things. So uh, let's see, we got FKIK switch on there. So I'm going to go and let's see, I'll grab my shoulder joint, my shoulder FK rig, and go to window, uh, hypergraph connections. And this is all a mess right now to sort through, but we're really only worried about these two highlighted ones. So I'm just going to try to keep an eye on that because I, I'd move them off, but I have to go make a new node. And as soon as I do, it'll rearrange everything in here. So rendering, uh, create render node, and go to my utilities, and then grab a color blender, or blend colors. And where did that go? Oh my god, there it is. All right, so I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to select my shoulder joint, my FK rig in here, so I can see where those are, and pull them down. Oh, you know what? I need to get the IK rig in there too, because I need to plug it into this blender. So I'm going to grab all three so I don't lose them. Uh, find my left shoulder IK rig. Okay. So I've got all three and I'm going to graph them. Like in this little kind of Starship Enterprise looking uh, one yellow box into two gray ones. Click that. Okay, here's all my nodes. I'm going to pull them off. I'm not too worried about where the connections are going right now. I'm just worried about seeing the nodes so I have an easy way to connect everything. Um, that's the shoulder joint. So uh, we'll have... Maybe we did do a blend color, but whatever, we're doing it again because it's uh, more stable, you know, mathematically of, of the others. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is, well, no, I'm not going to plug that in because it'll be the wrong number at first. Um, I'm going to take, let's see, what do I want first and what do I want second? So I'm pretty sure, all right, well, I think I'm going to start with the IK rig. I think that's the order I need to get, get in. Um, and I'm going to hook up. It's scale X into color 1, R. So we're just going to go down the row. So say X is equal to R, Y is equal to G, C is equal to B, and we're only interested in R. So we can always say RGB or XYZ. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load up the left shoulder and grab its scale and plug it into color 2. And, gee. and and you know what? I, I'm going to plug both the elbow and the um, shoulder into this one uh, blender node because why make two when you have you know two more plugs available to, to slots to plug into for the elbow? Um, so I'll do the uh, shoulder first, and then do the elbow on this. And we'll just call this left uh, arm scale blend. Okay. So. Let me, let me make sure this is right. I'm going to turn the scale of my shoulder up here. And uh, we'll put, okay, so, nope, I got those backwards. Because I want, I want uh, the FK to be the first one. Well, no, I'm trying to remember how the blender works. If it's on zero, we'll find out here in a second. 
That's the part I can remember. Uh, if zero is this number, zero is this number. Um, call that that, and we'll plug the left arm scale uh, blender into the shoulder. And we just want the output R, because that's all we plugged into for inputs. And find our scale X. Okay, no, I did do that right. Zero is uh, FK. That's what I want, because we have on here our FK switch is we run zero or an FK. So I want that to be the same. So whatever this number is, can plug into the blend number of this. It's a one to one transition, and uh, we're fine. So, okay. So let's go ahead and plug in uh, the elbow into this. So. Uh, I'm going to bring back my connection editor, load up my blend node, and I'm just going to go my outliner to find my elbows. Um, elbow, or wait, no. Uh, FK elbow, load that, and where is scale? There it is. So you're going to plug it scale X. So we still need to scale X, but I'm just going to plug it into the next value down. Um, and do the same for the IK rig, go to, and then we're going to load the blender as the output, grab the elbow joint, and load that as the input, and I'll put G, now it goes into scale X. Okay. So good, I think. So we get we got our oh, do I have both selected or I just have the one? Okay, so here's what we got going on. You notice right now how it seems to be scaling everything, uh, including the hand. Um, we don't want that. We we gotta uh, stop that from happening um, because I I haven't scaled this yet. I thought I unlocked you. I must have undid that. I haven't scaled this yet, but it's scaling everything down here. Um, and I think what's going on is because of the way I have the controls parented. Um, whoops, not not zero. Zero is wrong. Okay. So we're just we're still just focusing focusing on the uh, uh, FK arm, but we're seeing the effects because the IK or the, the regular joint arm is following um, the scale of uh, our FK arm, and the FK arm is following the scale of these controls. And I think what's going on is because I have this control parented under this control is, well, let's build a couple objects real quick and you can see what happens uh, if, you're, if you're not following along with where I'm going with this yet. So I'm just going to make two spheres here. And I'm going to parent one under the other. And I'm going to skip uh, this, this sphere. Ah, this sphere is the parent of this sphere. So watch what happens when I scale it. Notice how that one's getting scaled too. It's not just um, changing a position. Uh, it's actually getting scaled also. So I think that's what's going on with our controls. Uh, so we need to change the way that these are hierarchied. And the way we'll do that... So I'm looking for whatever the clavicle control is, which is, uh, I believe, parented under... Uh, See somewhere in here. Okay, there we go. So what we need to do is unparent these from one another. So when I'm scaling the shoulder, it's not scaling the elbow. Um, and I'm going to grab the left uh, elbow FK CT group and the left shoulder FK CT group. Um, I'm just going to put them all under the same. Whoops, uh, our master group. So I'm just seeing P on this. So I'm basically unparent them from the clavicle, but leaving them in this group. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and reorganize these for the sake of me being able to see what's going on. Um, so now, when I scale the shoulder, the, the elbow doesn't go, but um, we need the control to stick with wherever the, uh, the elbow is actually at. Um, so we're going to change the way it, it's following everything. Same with the shoulder. If I move the clavicle right now, um, it's not going to follow the clavicle anymore which is, is not quite right. Um, so let's let's go fix that. Um, 
So what I needed to do is stick to this point right here, so it's always pivoting from here, but follow the rotations of this. So easy enough, I'm going to uh, make sure I'm grabbing the, the joints here. Um, okay, so I'm going to grab the left shoulder FK rig, and I'm going to grab the left shoulder FK control group, I'm going to constrain and point. And uh, I'm going to hook up this thing so it's still driving the rotations, but it's follow the rotations of the clavicle. And since this control isn't driving the position of this joint, just the rotations of it, I can point constrain it to this joint and not get a dependency loop. If I had made this control so when I translate it around, it translates that joint around, I could not do that. I'd have to tell it to follow the clavicle the whole time. Um, but in this case, we get away with that because we're not telling it to drive the transformations and then uh, having it follow the transformations of the joint at the same time. So, uh, let's see. So I'm going to grab the clavicle joint here and grab the FK shoulder control. Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, constrain. Uh, I'm going to do orange, but I want to leave maintain offset on because we we don't want it to jump to the orientation of the clavicle. We just want it to follow its position. Um, so now when I rotate uh, the the clavicle, you see that this the joint is following with the arm. This is the IK uh, rig still here, um, but and it's sticking to that point. So. Uh, Let's do the same for the elbow real quick. So I'm going to grab the FK uh, elbow rig and grab the CT group for the left elbow control. Constrain point. And then again, I'm going to have this control follow the orientation of the shoulder. So it's always attached and following along what the orientation of the shoulder is, but then we can still drive the rotations of the elbow on its own. Uh, so shoulder, okay, elbow, constrain, orange. I can just select this now because uh, maintain offset should still be checked on. And because I didn't see that control jump up there or change uh, rotation, um, we should be fine. Okay, so let's test the scaling idea out now and see if it's working as expected. Okay, that part's good. That's good. Okay. Well, no, that's not good. That's still not right. So when I'm scaling the whole arm, it shouldn't be scaling the base arm here. Maybe we won't use a blend node because if it's doing that. Let me check something here. Because um, it's it's happening in... Well, let's see. Is it happening in the FK rig or is it only happening... See, let's let's hide some of our rigs first because that's going to get confusing. So I'm going to hide the left shoulder joints. We're only seeing the FK uh, rig here, and then I'll hide the IK rig. So uh, actually, I'm going to go back and hide them both at the same time. So when I do uh, unhide last hit, and they both show back up. Okay, so let's look at what's going on here. So I scale the arm. So it is still scaling the FK arm. So let's look in our attributes here, and here it transforms is on, that's correct. Um, so there's something in here I'm looking for called inverse scaling. Uh, and if it's not hooked up in here, we'll go hook it up manually. I can't remember where it's at though. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a... Uh, well, I'll, I'll do it the, the manual way. So, let's go ahead and graph this guy. Okay, so here's the left elbow FK group, and let's look at the shoulder also. And select both of those and graph it. Okay, these guys aren't hooked up, that's what our problem is. So there's something called inverse scale, and basically what that says, at least when it comes to joints, is, hey, when I scale you, I want you to scale, but I really don't want you to scale. So can you counter out uh, the scaling that's happening up here? Uh, by default, when you create joints, that's usually hooked up, but sometimes in copying and pasting joints and, and repairing them, 
or um, uh, various things happen when that gets disconnected or not made. So we're going to go ahead and make that connection. And so I'm just dragging the left shoulder FK rig into the left elbow uh, FK rig. And if I believe I'm hooking up scale, and there should be something in here called inverse scale. There it is. Alright, I'm going to get take a wild guess here, and I'm going to guess this isn't on our other joints as well. Um, which, if it's not on all of them, that's going to kind of suck, because that should have been made by default. But let's, let's test this theory right now and see if it's scaling the other ones now when I at least that. So, uh, well, I need to do it on the on these two guys too. So, load up the left shoulder, left, load up the left elbow. Uh, scale to inverse scale. Okay. So that's looking better. Now, now we don't get our hand getting bigger, our forearm isn't getting bigger. That's what we were looking for. Um, if I need to reparent my controls to do that, I don't know that, but that is something sometimes that can lead to that. But let's go hook this up on our IK rig as well. Shoot, I hate it when stuff that's supposed to be created by default isn't actually made, or I broke it somehow. One of the two. Okay, and that one just isn't hooked up yet. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's let's graph this guy so we can find that blend node. Scale elbow. No, yeah, I want left arm scale. Um, right now that should be. Oh, I, I don't think I plugged it in. Did I? Or did I do the reverse order? Maybe I did the reverse order. Let's rehook that up. Okay, so I'm bringing back up my connection editor. Left arm blend. We'll put in the FK elbow. Uh, FK, I believe, wants to go second. Let's see where I put it. Ah, that's why I did these backwards. So plug this in down here. I'm going to grab the IK. Uh, elbow, scale X, there we go. So now I want to grab this guy, okay. and so it looks like our inverse scale is hooked up okay on our hand because if it wasn't, um, we'd be getting really long fingers all of a sudden like we were before. So, but uh, here we go, we got FK controls or uh, FK controls with scaling on to allow us to control uh, stretch. So pretty basic. It's it's just dealing with the existing scale. Um, nothing super fancy. <laughs> Don't reset those to zero because that's no scale, which is nothing. Uh, we always want one for the default scale. Uh, we'll go ahead and zero these back out. Okay, so there we got. Uh, FK scale. And we use it uh, doing a blend node, so we're just saying blend from one color to the other. Uh, in this case, it's blend from one rotation to the uh, other of the IK rig. Um, and we're just using the existing scale. Now, if if you didn't want to actually use scale, you could always uh, use another um, make your own custom attribute and put it in there. It's, it's the same difference. It, you know, uh, The only thing is you'd have to well, it, it's not quite the same difference, because you'd have to start it out on one. You'd always want to be able to set it back to one. Um, so there might be a little bit more hooking up there uh, in that case, but in this case we just hook it up to scale. So, um, so there's that arm. So now we got to do the IK arm, and that one's going to be a little bit trickier because, well, let, let's put this way: we could do the the same thing, and to some set, extent we kind of will. So I was just actually talking about making a custom uh, attribute. Um, we're going to do that too, actually. So let's go ahead and. Uh, let's see. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead. We're going to make this thing, but we're not going to do anything with it for a bit. Um, just so that we know that it's here, and hopefully I don't forget about it. So, uh, let's say, uh, shoulder stretch, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, elbow stretch. 
click add. Okay, so we have those there. We're going to use them for later. Um, in this case, uh, we can build something a little bit fancier. We, we want something that looks at wherever this control is, and when I go longer than the arm, it just stretches to match it. And that's going to be a whole lot easier to animate with when it comes to the stretch. Um, there are some drawbacks to it because it's hard to stretch the arm when it's pulled back this way, and we also don't want the arm to shrink when we go shorter than the distance because we want the elbow to bend. Um, we can handle that to some extent by multiplying these in with whatever uh, uh, length changes happen here. Um, so that's kind of the overview of what's going to happen here. Um, so re really what we want to do to be able to do that is we need to be able to measure this distance and say, hey, when we go longer, uh, go ahead and start scaling these joints. Um, so we can do that with a curve. Uh, Maya knows how long any curve that it builds is. Um, so I'm going to turn off polygons here for a second. And um, I'm going to build two curves. Uh, one is the one that we'll actually use. And then I'll build a second one after that to kind of measure the actual numbers. Because I've, I've got a bend in the arm. So let me, uh, again, I'm jumping ahead here. Let me go ahead and actually make my CV curve. And I want it on linear. I just want a straight line. So I'm going to hold down my V key to toggle on uh, snap to point. Uh, click on the shoulder. And then click on the wrist. And there I have a curve. Um, I don't think it says by default how long it is in here. Does it? No. Nope. I don't see anything. So, uh, what we're going to do is turn on away to see how long it is. And there's a little piece of Mel script, uh, you know, and there's probably a button for it somewhere. Maybe there isn't. I, don't know there, I know there's a bunch of stuff you can turn on only if you know the Mel script for it. So, maybe this is one of those cases. Um, but uh, we're going to use something called arc length. Um, and actually, if you've ever used the measure tool, um, or even the arc length tool, I guess. Let's, let's try that, see what happens. I click out something. Maybe that's for something else. What if I click on a curve? Oh, hey, maybe that's it right there. Huh, this is something new in Maya. So, uh, what's it telling me? Okay, so yeah, if I put this all the way at the end, we could see the length of it. Um, so we know it's 27.583758 units long, it looks like there. Um, so that's good. Uh, if you use the measuring tape tool, um, I think you use that also. Um, or distance tool, sorry. It's under the measuring tape. So, yep, those two numbers look the same. So that's one way to get the uh, overall uh, distance of something. Um, what I don't like about these is that the numbers show up, and I kind of want my rigs clean. Um, so I could use those if I wanted to continue to get the length, but I I don't because I don't want to see any of that stuff. I mean, I could hide it again later, but um, you know, th this is a perfect personal preference. You could use any of those as long as you get that number and be able to plug that number into something. So as long as there's an attribute somewhere in here or over here with that, let's let's check this out. Because actually, I've never used this before. This is me. Uh, discovering this tool right now because I've been doing this one way for so long. Let's see, I'm trying to open. Should be editor here. Is there? Is there something saying how long it is here? Which I don't see it. I don't know where that number actually is. So I think you can, but I mean it's got to be there somewhere. But here's the way I, I'll do it. So um, same concept, but I'm going to grab my curve. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and, and name this um, left arm. Uh, I'll just call it CRV, just left arm curve. Um, so with that selected, I'm going to type in, break back up. What's going on, my? Okay. Type in uh, arc. I'm trying to remember if it's arc len or arc. Yeah, I need to type in the whole thing. Let me. Try arc length first. Um, so arc length dash ch, and that stands for channel. So I'm turning on a channel. I'm going to turn it on to one, which essentially means on. So I'm going to highlight that so it doesn't disappear when I hit enter in case it's 
the wrong. Nope, that's wrong. I think it's just arcling. R e n. Uh, so uh, it's arc. It is arc len, just no capitals. I always capitalize because the way I'm doing camel case for everything. But that's not right for the mail script. Ca uh, capitalization changes what the script does. So arc len, so stand for arc arc length. Just three letters though for length. Dash ch dash one. We go ahead and hit enter, and we get this curve info node. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this so I can identify it later when I get other curve info nodes for all the other limbs. Um, okay. So now if we go into the attribute editor for that and look at this curve info node, hey, there's that number that I need. And I can plug this in um, with an expression or a, a condition node or whatever to, uh, or really a multiply divide node, which is what we're going to use uh, to figure out the overall uh, length of this guy. Um, so what we want is, uh, well, here's the issue. So we have a certain length here for this curve, which is going to be slightly shorter than the actual arm because the arm is bent. Um, so what I want to do is go build another curve here that actually follows the, the arm. Dundee. Oh, I'm not on create curve. I'm on uh, the measure tool, uh, CV curve tool. So I'm point snapping to the uh, shoulder. I'm going to point snap to the elbow. And and for this, I just need to see the number. So actually, I'm going to use that handy little measuring tool, arc length. Let's drag this all the way down to the bottom. And so let me open up Notepad here. So uh, arm total length is 27.611592. Whereas uh, this straight curve that we currently have is only 27584. 27584. Actually, I'm going to reduce this down to a place number. Okay, so this one's slightly longer. So what's the problem with that if uh, we're using this one to stretch? Well, what will happen is that we're saying uh, we need to say only after you get longer than this do you start to stretch. Um, so because otherwise if we start to stretch based on just this curve right here, um, the arm will never go completely straight. It'll always have that slight bend in it. Um, so we want to be able to go straight. So like if you're doing a punch and you want to exaggerate it, so that that arm has a little bit of stretch to it. Um, that's something you could do then. Um, so let's let's see uh, what do I want to do next. So let's hook this up into a multiply divide node. Um, let's see. Uh, I need to make sure I need to handle the condition, and I need to um, well, let's do the multiply and divide first. We'll we'll figure out the overall length here uh, eventually. Um, and actually, now that I got that number, I'm just going to go ahead and delete. Where's my outliner? There it is. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that other curve that I made. Okay, so we just have the one curve. Um, so we need it to follow uh, the arm. And, and by the way, so that arc link or that uh, arc length curve info node, it will. It, it will update as we stretch this arm. So we want it to always stay with the IK handle and always stay with the shoulder. So we'll do that the way we've kind of done before with clusters. And so I'll, I'll grab just the endpoint of this, uh, create cluster, and do the same for the other end. I'm just need G to repeat the last command. I'm going to go to my outliner and name both those clusters so I can figure out what they are later. Um, Left arm start cluster, CLS uh, for cluster, and left arm and CLS. And again, nothing special about those names, just kind of letting me know, like, okay, I know these are the only two clusters for the arm, 
I, I can tell they're clusters because of the icon and the name, and here's the start one, here's the end one. Um, and uh, let's see, we want them to follow these different parts. Um, I'm, gee, I'm, I think if we just parent constraint, it would be fine. I, I think there's a deal with like parenting things that clusters want to group over them. Um, but we'll see how this works. Uh, so we'll, we're going to tell it to stay with the um, the overall position of this clavicle, because again, we're going to control the scale of this arm uh, with this cluster. So if we just parent constraint to here, it should keep its distance. Um, actually, you know, we could point constrain it because we don't we don't care about rotating it. So let's actually put it on the FK shoulder. I think this should be fine. Strain point. Yeah, because we rotate it, there's no other points, and that point is right to the shoulder. So we should be fine point constraining this. Um, and I'm going to grab the uh, the IK hand control here. And grab the other cluster constrain point. So now as we move this control around, you see our curve is sticking to those two points and stretching to it at the same time. So we want to figure out how how much longer this thing was than it was before. Um, let's say the current length is 100%, and then we want to figure out what the percentage difference is after that. So this is, what, 120% now? Um, and the easiest way to do that is through division. And what we'll do is divide uh, the current number by the original, and we'll see how many times does this number go into the original. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to remember which number I want to use because I, I don't want it to start stretching. I want it, you know, it should be, ah, right. Okay. So here's where our condition node happens is we're going to take whatever the current length is of the, uh, arm and divide it by this number because this is the overall length of the arm. So anytime that, that curve goes longer than this, um, we know it's stretching a certain percentage and, and we could figure out if it goes in 1.2 times, 1.5 times. And, and that's our percentage. It's the same thing as our, our scale that we'll have over here. Um, then we need a condition node to say, well, if this is, if that percentage is less than one, then use this number uh, for the scale, uh, or you know, the, the scale is one essentially. So um, I don't actually I don't know if we'll need this number. I'm trying to remember how this works. So sometimes I do this, and sometimes I don't. We're all we're all learning at the moment. Or I'm relearning, like I do every time I do this. Oh, how did I do this last time? So, uh, let's see. Uh, so we got those. We need to open up our hypergraph here. Um, and I'm going to grab my curve. Well, no, I'm going to make a rendering node first. Because I need a multiply divide node. Divide up those numbers. And multiply divide. And I, I could find this in my outliner. I just find it a whole lot easier to create these nodes in here. I mean, they, they show up in my outliner. I have to turn off show DAG objects only, and then it shows all that hidden stuff. But good God, there's so much in here already. I, I don't want to go. You know, well, there it is. So there's another way of finding it. Um, left arm, scale. Uh, this will actually be a divide. Okay, so I've got that node. So again, just two different ways to see all this stuff. I, you know, I can see the connections in here, but most of the time I'm just looking for some way to grab this guy easily. Uh, I'm going to open up the uh, attribute editor for him, and instead of multiply, I want to divide. And since we're plugging this into scale x, uh, I'm going to use uh, the first place here, and I want um, there's that curve info node somewhere in here. There it is. And if, so if I want to get a hold of this, I can just click select on any one of these tabs. And now I've got the curve info node selected. So I'm going to go to window, general editor, uh, connection editor, with that curve info node up as the output. Find that multiply divide node that I just made, set to divide. Um, I'm going to take that arc length number and uh, plug it into input one or input 1x. And the second one I'm just going to paste in. Um, so you can see there it's, it's using the current length, but we really want this number 
because that's the number that's going to get it to the overall length of the actual arm. So when it's straight out, um, then it stretches. It doesn't stretch till then. Um, so in theory, uh, right now it's slightly less than one. So this is where we need a condition node to be added into this. Um, because if I plug this in right now, uh, the output's going to be less than one. Let's let's just go grab my calculator real quick and, and show you what the scale's going to be. So if we did 27.584 uh, divided by 27.6, oops, 612, our, our bones would shrink right now. So if I plug this into the, the scale of the elbow and the shoulder right now, they would go down slightly uh, because they're about 1% um, smaller than what the current length of the arm is. So this is why I need a condition because I don't want the arm to shrink as soon as I plug this in. I want it to stay either as long as it currently is or longer, but it doesn't ever go shorter because I want to be able to bend the elbow still. And if I can't move this handle in, I can't bend the elbow. You know, if it just shrinks as I do that, that's not particularly useful. Um, so let's go ahead and plug that in uh, to a condition node. So this is going to go, this multiply is going to go through a condition node first. Um, so let's go and create rendering node. So I, I just have my windows open still. So create rendering node, um, and we're going to find a condition node. Where is it? They're always right in front of me. I just could never see them. Um, and Let's load this condition up as the input and grab this multiply divide, load it up as the output. Let's, look, let's go ahead and look at our condition node. Um, so what we want is, the, so we're going to look at the uh, first term and we're going to say whatever the overall length of the arm is, so that, which is going to be this number right now. Um, let's go ahead and plug that in. Actually, you know, we want the, uh, we want the arc length for this. Um, is that still in here somewhere? Let me just grab these both and graph them because I know the arc length is plugged into the multiply divide node. Um, I guess the curve info node. So we want to say the arc length is going into the first term and the second term is going to be what the overall length of the arm is. So you already see that uh, you know this again. This is smaller. This is the current length because that's that's our straight line from point A to point B. And you know, we got a triangle here. We're making, and we're going to say only when is the first term greater than the second term. Do we start to stretch? And by start to stretch, um, that means using the scale from this multiply divide node. So let's go ahead and hook that up. So we've already set the condition saying if it's greater than the overall length of the arm, take the output from the scale uh, divide node um, and plug it into the color R if true. And we'll plug color R into uh, the, the skeleton. If that's not the case, then just use a scale of one and it doesn't ever get smaller than that. So let's go and plug our condition node now into the scale of our actual joint. And by the way, we, sh we should see this actually in our skin too because we, we hooked up our color blender uh, and we're on, uh, we're on IK now, so we should see that scale happening once we hook this up. So uh, what I'm looking for, I want to plug in my condition node into the scale of my uh, IK arm, elbow, and joint. So let's see. Uh, I don't think I ever unhid. Or no, I did. Okay, they're they're showing. No, that's my controls. Okay, but they are showing. Uh, so I'm going to plug this into the outcolor R, which is our scale X coming from our multiply divide node, into scale X. And I'm going to do the same thing for the elbow. And let's see if I did this right or if I screwed it up totally. Oh, 
Okay, well, it's working for the FKIK arm. Um, it is not working on... Oh, ha! Huh. You know why? Because I don't think I ever hooked up um, the FKIK, uh, FKIK switch from uh, this control onto the blend node that I made. Uh, so I'm going to go find that my outliner. Right arm scale. Yeah, there's nothing controlling the blender, so we're just always stuck on FK. There we go. Now it's working. Let's turn on our skin to see how that looks. That's what we're expecting to see. So you can see now, as I go longer and longer, the arm just stretches out, and it's, it's uniform. So the elbow and the shoulder are always the same length. Um, so we've got scaling the FK arm, and we've got scaling the IK arm. Uh, the only thing is, what if I wanted some more control over this? What if I want more stretching in the, the, the forearm than I do the shoulder here? Um, so now we get back to why I made these two. So what we're going to do is um, wh whatever our actual scale is. So I could either do two things. I could either say, take whatever the number is here and add it into the scale, or I could say, multiply it if I want you know, much more, you know, a much quicker effect. Um, I think I'm going to say, add it in. So... Uh, let's go get our condition node up here. Um, oh, and actually, so th this works in this case because right now I'm just saying, hey, whatever that condition node is, plug the same thing into uh, the shoulder and the elbow. Um, what I need to do now is because I'm going to have two different numbers that I'm going to multiply is, is get two different numbers out of that condition. Uh, let's see. I, trying to find the best way to go dig those back up. Okay, here's my condition node. So really, I, I need one for shoulder, one for elbow. Uh, easy enough. So let's go ahead and reload the condition node, reload the multiply divide node. Um, and this is going to be redundant, but I just want to show you guys what I'm doing. So I'm taking the output from output X, and I, I just plug it into the second term. So... So there's my shoulder, there's my elbow. Same number, just different thing. But we're going to put an addition node in between these two. So I actually need two addition nodes. So uh, create render node, uh, utilities, and where is it? Plus minus average. I'm going to make two of those. And I'll name these. Um, Left, uh, uh, left shoulder scale uh, add. Let's copy that name to be slightly lazy. Paste it in this one and change shoulder to elbow. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to do is, is take the existing number from here, plug it into here and then take that number from the slider that we made and also plug it into here uh, and then add those two together and put that back into the condition node for the color true for shoulder and for elbow. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start with the slider. And remember, the, the first thing we hook up when it comes to add, uh, subtract, or average node is uh, we'll go into the zero slot and then everything after that um, we, we have to script because otherwise it just overwrites that zero slot. Uh, but not hard because Maya spits out that script as soon as I do this. We'll just copy and paste that and change some names. So there's where it connected that attribute. And I'm just going to say instead of now uh, the hand control, I'm going to go to that multiply divide node. Switch its name before the period, and after the period, uh, output X, I think is what it's called. And, yep, okay. And then we'll do the same thing on this elbow one. And I've, I've still got the control loaded up here. Put one. I'm just going to grab the last half here because the first half should still be the same. 
There we go. So that's adding those two things together, and now we just put this into the condition node instead of saying th this was getting the numbers directly from the multiply divide node. Now we have this happening in between, so we need to get the added numbers instead. So start with the left shoulder, take the output 1D, plug it into the first term. Wait, what? Nope, that's not what I wanted. Undoing, okay. Not first term. Let me reload this so it doesn't look like it's plugged in. Um, let me reload my condition so it looks like it's not plugged in. Sorry, uh, color true. Jumped ahead. Um, I'll put 1D into color uh, R true, so that's one reason for the shoulder. Grab the one for the elbow now and plug it into output 1D into color G, which is the one we're using for the elbow. So by default, it looks like we're getting the same thing, that we're getting this nice uniform scale. But now, if I want the elbow to bend here for some reason, oh, you're making me a liar. I hate it when it makes me a liar. Why is that not adding that on? All right, let's check out our hypergraph here. Let's graph all this stuff again. Okay, so we have that color that's coming out. So those are still both the same number. Oh, ha! You know what I I did? I did the stupid thing that I said, this is why we're scripting it, uh, and then kept it the exact same way. Uh, I forgot to change the number place. So we're again, we're just overriding uh, 1 with 0 or zero with zero again. So it's the same thing if you're plugging in the connection error. I always do that. Um, so looking for... I'm being lazy here and I don't want to type it back in. Alright, so there's the elbow one and then there's the shoulder one. There it is. So there's what we originally did, and then, you know, here's what we originally did. So I could go and hook these up again. I could just either drag these over, but what we did was we overwrote the um, connection with the actual control with the connection from the multiply divide node when I overwrote it into zero. So I, I took, here's what we originally did. I pasted it in to switch out the names, but I forgot the change which slot we're putting it in. So it just overwrote the original connection. So I'm going to change that to 1. And again, I'm just going to be lazy here and not go rehook these up. I'm just going to look for what we originally connected. Uh, shoulder scale, where's the... Okay. So if you're looking at the script, uh, again, here's what we originally hooked up. We're hooking up the, the hand control into uh, input 1D slot 0, and then where I screwed up was I forgot to change that from 0 to 1. And then here's the same thing for the um, the elbow, copied it, pasted it, changed it from the, the left hand control elbow switch to the left arm scale divide dot output uh, X, and then forgot to change this to 1. So I can take that script, plug it in now, and now that should be a different number. So, so I take this. That's what I was expecting to see. So it's it's pretty poor looking here as far as the deformation that's happening, but we can get quite a lot of uh, control out of this. So adding in that scale, um, and it just it doesn't look great because of you know here's how much geometry is actually there. So if we had a denser model, sure, but that's that's a really extreme case. Or even if you are doing it, you're doing it for like a second. Um, you know, what's, what's more likely the case is, uh, maybe you're, uh, trying to get more stretch in the forearm than the shoulder for a second. So you might, you know, bring the stretch down on the shoulder, say, I don't know, let's say 0.2, negative 0.2, but then bring it up on the elbow by 0.2. And so you, 
Well, something like that. I don't know. Should make it. Is that one plugged in? Oh, why, why, why? Okay, what did I screw up here now? That's not my script editor. Um, welcome to, to Troubleshooting uh, 101. Uh, this is where we build stuff and figure out what we screwed up. Okay. So we're not seeing a change in the scale. Elbow stretch, arm scale, output X. Those are both into elbow scale. It's going to hit this in again. Make sure it, for some reason, didn't skip. Alright, so that's already happy with that. So the only thing I can think of is I hooked up the condition wrong, so I'm not, and this is still hooked up to um, color R instead of color G. So let's see if that's the issue there. Oh, you know, what? I haven't named this condition yet either. So. Okay. And let's see if that's what I forgot to do. I just have the wrong color being plugged in. Uh, it looks like it because I have G isn't hooked up to anything, so that's that's my issue. That looks like something happened. <laughs> there we go. So let's try that theory again. Of if we want to change how the the, the ratio of the arms. So let's say uh, negative. Let's even go with negative 0.3 and positive 0.3. Yeah. So we still got the same overall length of the arm, but we changed the ratio. So that might be good for like some squash and stretch as you're punching and uh, of continuing that motion. So that you know, hmm, let's go ahead and animate that real quick. So let's set a keyframe there, and then uh, we'll change that to positive three and negative three. Or not negative three, negative point three. Because again if we go lower than one then that's backwards, that's negative scale. Um, you can see how that kind of shifts the, the overall length of the arm. And we're seeing a little bit of wobble in the hand because it's budging the overall length and it's trying to stick to that point but not able to. Um, but there we go. So Sorry for the the forgetting little bits and uh, or screwing up little parts and not actually hooking them up. Um, but so so what did we do again here on the IK arm? We created a curve and we got used that script uh, arc length so r a r c l e n space dash c h space dash one that turns on that curve info node that we can see the overall length in the uh, attribute editor. We do something similar, so we at least see the length of the arm uh, when it's bent. Um, we we divide the overall length of the arm by whatever the current length of the curve is that we built, and we attach that curve through clusters to either end of the arm. Uh, we just use point constraints. And then when you divide the current length by the uh, the starting length, you get a percentage. You, you get 1.1 or 1.2 or, or whatever. You just plug that in your scale and now it, it's scaling it up. Um, then uh, to make sure it doesn't shrink as you go smaller, you can still bend your arm, you set up a condition node saying only go uh, start scaling up when you're greater than um, your existing starting length. And then if not, stay at 1. Don't, don't change your scale. Um, and then we also plug these in, so we, we had to use different nodes so we could control uh, stretch these. Oh, and uh, those aren't going to work right now because uh, they're not, the condition node is not greater. So actually, now that I do that, I can change it. So what we want to do is actually make sure we got to do the same thing with uh, the condition node to, so it's getting that number. Um, so 
this is one of those tricky things because this is zero and if I just plug it in to uh, if I go grab that condition node and plug it in here well now I have no scale when I'm on scaling so if I always want to be able to use those uh, we got to go make two more I'm just going to duplicate those two two more add uh, subtract uh, nodes and I don't know. I'll, I'll name these something. Uh, scale uh, underscore less than. And uh, I mean, part of this looks like I, I don't particularly know what I'm doing, and the, the truth is I don't. It, it's I build stuff and kind of got the general idea of what it needs, and then I test it out and see how it works, and I keep iterating on it until it does work. Um, you know, that's the nature of uh, you know rigging. It's, as far as been my experience doing this for you know however many years I've been doing this now, um, you know, it's always kind of like it pick it up like this, right? No, I'm missing something. What am I missing? And then figure out what I'm missing and, and and add that in and just correct as I go. Um, but you know, rarely ever do I get it so bad that I can't fix it. Um, so let me see. I've got plugged in here. So this one, no, that's not what I wanted. Well, I'm not sure which one's which, but at least I have the two numbers, so I can just plug in whatever. Once they're there, I could plug them in through here, and it's not a problem. Um, so let's see. I need to change these. I need to add an attribute onto each of these to get current scale. So this we're starting with the scale one. So current scale, default scale, whatever I'll call it something. It doesn't really matter. Nobody's ever going to touch that. Just me. Um, and reload this and plug it into itself. And same with this guy. Okay, and I, I don't know what's plugged in here currently, so I'm just going to go gra grab control and make sure it's actually the slider that I want. Uh, this one's the shoulder, so I'll plug the shoulder into there. And grab the one for the elbow, plug it into there. Okay. So, now that we have that, uh, we're going to grab our condition node again. And so, kind of same deal. So this one, um, th these are looking at, okay, grab the scale that's happening from that uh, arc length uh, math that's going on add it to the sliders, uh, and that's what happens when we stretch getting longer. When we're not stretching when we're you know, at the current length or lower, we well, don't get this arm scale, just start with one and add on what, whatever's on these uh, sliders. So we'll plug this in to a false. Uh, elbow is G, shoulder, oh, whoops, uh, is that the right number? Uh, output 1D is G, and I'll put 1D of the elbow. Wait, I'm already mixing it. So shoulder, I'll put 1D is R, elbow, 1D is G. So like I'm going down the chain of like shoulder, elbow, hand is how I'm kind of, think of thinking of that. So now when I'm at zero or lower, I can still use these. That's really extreme. Whoa, what happened there? Let's undo that. Something's Something's gone horribly wrong. Okay. Wow, that was that was not right at all. Let's go back to our hypergraph. Let's see, the current scale plus shoulder stretch. Now I have this both at shoulder. Um, make sure the elbow is connected to the elbow stretch. Okay, let's try this again and see what number it's getting first. Okay, cycle on left shoulder. Okay, something is going on where we're in independency loop now. 
that's what's going on. So elbow's fine. I screwed something up on the shoulder, it looks like. Yeah, so he's okay. So let's let's redo the connections on the shoulder because apparently something went god awful wrong there. Um, so shoulder stretch plugs into input Mindy, and then we'll reload the shoulder node up. Current scale. Oh, that's what happened. I must have hooked something else up to that. Uh, I could tell that was a dependency loop because I got a warning here about the cycles, which is usually a note about dependency loops. Uh, oh, and I gotta hook that back up because I undid that connection because as soon as we had a dependency loop, it went to hell. Um, okay, so output 1D, color false, color R. There we go. So we have stretching on the shoulder when we need it. Um, and elbow. And you'll notice like there's some wonky stuff. This is, you have to skin weight a little bit differently when you have scaling involved, because now you have to think about how it's going to scale as well. It's not just about the rotations, but also the scaling. Um, but when when you're doing mostly the stretch, you get away with a lot there. It's it's when you go smaller that stuff starts to look really bad and weird. Um, but there you go. Okay, so now we actually have FK, IK switching. Um, again, we had to add those uh, plus minus nodes in there, uh, average, to... Um, deal with the false situation of when we're in, in the false state of this arm is, you know, that curve is not currently longer than the overall length of the arm, so now we're in the false state. Um, we just had it set to 1, and then these sliders didn't do anything, so we had to hook the sliders up there. But they start at 0, scale needs to at least equal 1, um, so we had to add something together so that, you know, these are being added to 1, uh, so we get that scale. So, there you have it. Uh, same concept gets applied to the legs if you want stretchy knees. Um, if you want your spine, you do the same thing. Uh, you wouldn't do the... I don't know if you do the overall length because it's not really bending. I mean, the S-curve kind of stays in the spine. But you would want it to wherever the pivot points of the hip control and the um, chest control's pivot points are. So I wouldn't. the curve wouldn't be built up to the spine. It would be from that point to this point, or vice versa. And um, I don't know if you'd have to do the condition node, because you might actually want it to be smaller when you go down. Um, or maybe you build some uh, attribute that says, hey, when this is set to zero, don't scale up and down. Uh, just scale up. Uh, but when this is set to one, now scale down, so your, your animators have control over it. Um, and uh, you, know, you can do the same with the head, you know, because on here we have uh, this end joint for the IK handle, you can make that scale up and down if you want the skin weight the head, but then you get to a whole different beast of how do you keep all those uh, facial pieces together. Um, so typically I, I keep it to the back and arms and legs. Um, but there's other ways you can start to play with that. Um, that's the general concept and hopefully that could take you to other places if you have other ideas of, of what you would like for scaling. But um, what I always tell people when they ask, you know, what's the best way to do this? The, the answer is always depends, and it depends on what you're trying to animate and what you're trying to do. So uh, maybe that'll work for you, maybe it won't, depending on your character. But um, for now, that's uh, scaling through FK controls or scaling through IK controls, and uh, apply that to what you will. All right, see you next lesson.